You see all of this wonderful Nikon gear down here? Well, none of that is actually mine. It's all been loaned to me by Nikon. Now, I thought I was going to borrow the camera and a couple of lenses for a few weeks whilst I make my decision as to whether or not I was going to buy the Z7 II. Only Nikon never asked for the gear back, so I've just kind of held on to it until now. So pretty soon, all of this gear will have to go back to Nikon and I will have to buy my own, which is fine. That was what I was going to do all along. Now, I'm 85% sure that I'm going to buy the Z7 II, although I am going to borrow the Z8 for a trip which I have coming up in a couple of weeks. And having the Z8 on that trip, well, it gives the Z8 an opportunity to sway my decision. But as it stands, when I made the Z8 video, my conclusion was that for what I do, the Z7 is probably just fine. I'm definitely going to buy the 100-400 lens. And I've had the opportunity recently to flirt with a couple of Nikon 14 mils. That's the 14 to 24 and the 14 to 30. I definitely now want a super wide in my life. As to which one of those two lenses, and that's a conversation for a whole other video. And that leaves me with the mid-range, arguably the most important range when it comes to lenses. Here we have a Nikon 24-70 f2.8, a 24-70 f4, and a 24-120. Three fantastic lenses for that mid-range, but of these three, I always reach for the f2.8 because it is the best quality lens. However, now that I'm going to have to part with my own cash, that opinion might change. Yes, it's the best lens, but by how much is it the best lens? And might actually one of these two be a better option? Well, that is exactly what I'm going to try and find out. I proceeded to take three images with each lens, one at 24mm, one at 45mm and one at 70mm, with the exception of the 24 to 120, which I took one additional image at 120mm. The settings were f11, ISO 64, and I focused on the lighthouse each time. Are you bored yet? It then occurred to me that I like to shoot at f5.6 a lot, so I took three more images at 50mm f5.6, which is a favourite combination of mine. After doing this, it occurred to me that I didn't think that this was enough, so I took more images at more settings and of more subjects, because after all, this is going to be a big purchase, and I want to get the decision right. I loaded the RAW files into Lightroom and began inspecting them closely, looking for obvious differences between the three lenses. And this is where my slow decline into madness began. <laughs> now I'm going to try and keep this brief, because there's nothing more boring than a photographer's sat his computer, pixel peeping over bland images, trying to identify which one is marginally better than the other one. This is just not the kind of content that I want to create. And the only thing I can think that's worse than doing this is sitting down for an afternoon and reading something like this, Chasing Ore by Gavin Hardcastle. Now, quite frankly, I don't want to make this video, but it is important that I deliver some solid consumer advice. So, let's get on with it. Let's begin with the 24 to 70 f2.8, a staple in any photographer's camera bag, but it comes with a hefty price tag of £2,119 at the time of recording this video. Now, if you are an event photographer, wedding photographer, sports photographer, portrait photographer, then there is no question. Unfortunately, you're going to have to drop those big <laughs> wads of cash. You're going to have to shell out and buy this lens. But I am a landscape photographer. I don't shoot people. I try and avoid them at all costs, actually. <laughs> Therefore, I don't need f2.8. So is it worth the extra cost and the extra weight? Because this weighs in at, I've forgotten, 845 grams. That's almost a kilo. That is a chunky lens. Whereas the f4, so 70 to 200 f4. Four lens, 70, not 70 to 200, flipping Nora. 24 to 70 f4 lens. This weighs in at something I've already forgotten, flipping heck. 535, 535 grams versus 845. So there is a big difference, but that is nowhere near as big a difference as the price. The 24 to 70 f4 comes in, <laughs> I'm looking at my notes, comes in at 959 pounds. That's less 
less than half the price of the 24 to 70 f 2.8 so you're going to pay double the price for one stop of light so surely with that massive price difference there's going to be a huge noticeable difference in quality between these two lenses that is what you would expect well we'll come on to that but let me introduce you to the third lens in the running which is the 24 to 120 f Four. That's the same as the 24 to 70 f4, but you get an additional 50 mil. There's some mathematics for you, an additional 50 millimeters of range. That's huge. If you're a travel photographer and you only want one camera and one lens, having 24 mil all the way through to 120 is excellent. Now, there is price difference between these two lenses and it's a whopping 10 pounds. So for an additional 10 English pounds, you get an extra 50 millimeters of reach. And let me tell you, there's not too much weight difference between them either, only about a hundred and so grams. So this falls right in between in terms of weight, the 24 to 72.8 and the F4, but Surely, surely with all of that reach from 24 to 120 at such a reasonable price, there is definitely going to be a drop off in quality, right? Surely you're going to be able to notice the difference because I thought so. I dismissed this lens straight away after one shoot thinking the quality wasn't there. That might have been too hasty. Now, before we get on to the worst part of the video, which is going into Lightroom and pixel peeping all of the various images taken with the various lenses, I want to thank today's sponsor and Thank you so much to Beer52 for sponsoring this video because, yeah, I, whoop, I definitely need a beer after making today's video. Now, if you're under 18 or outside of the UK, well, you can just skip this part. However, if you're over 18 in the UK and like a nice beer, then you definitely want to look at Beer52 because you can get a free case of beer exclusively curated and all you have to do is pay postage of $5.95. So to pick up your case of free beer, go to beer52.com forward slash Heaton and you'll be able to get this month's case, which is from God's own country, where I've been a lot recently with my camera, Yorkshire. The Yorkshire case, of course, is showcasing some of the best beers out of the county. For example, here we have a beautiful Earthly Delights Pale Ale and it is delicious. Also much needed. But there's loads of different beers in the case. There's Magic Rocks Gin and Tonic IPA, which is different. And if you prefer something more traditional, well, you can get a Black Sheep Brewery Rig Welter, which is more my kind of beer, I would say. Now the Rig Welter is a dark beer. But of course, if you prefer light beers, well, you can change, you can basically choose your box. You can choose a box of dark beer, a box of light beer, or you can have them mix. As well as a nice selection of beers, the box also includes a couple of nice snacks. But here's the best thing of all. If you're not satisfied, you can simply pause or cancel your subscription at any time. So if you fancy that, again, it's beer52.com forward slash Heaton. So if you've made it this far into the video, you are about to be rewarded as we pixel peep some of the worst images I've ever seen, but it is with a purpose to discovering the lens of choice. Now, I'm just recording my screen here and we're gonna go in and we're gonna look at the images. Now, there are some variables to consider. One of them actually is image shake. Some, when I was taking some of the images, it was quite windy. I've noticed there's a bit of vibration, which is why we have such a good selection. And I'm gonna start off by comparing on the left of screen, the 24 to 70 F4. On the right of screen, F2.8, 24 mil, F11, ISO 64. We're gonna zoom in 100%. We're gonna look at the lighthouse, which is where we focused. I can't see a difference. I cannot see a jot of difference. If we scroll down into the middle of the frame here, I see no difference, no difference at all. Here's a nice picture of some boats on the left, the F4, 24 to 70. On the right, the F2.8, 24 to 70. Again, I focused on the pub at the top there. Let's go in and have a look and to my surprise or not, I see no difference, no difference at all. That's between the 24 to 70 f4 and f2.8. What about halfway into the lens? So around about 40 mil. Again, on the left, the f4, on the right, the f2.8. And I'm looking here, I'm looking at this pub and well, there is just... Now, if I had to be really, really fussy and I'm really trying hard here, I would say that the 2.8 has a minuscule, tiny, 
tiny bit more contrast and I really have to look for it. If you look in the sign here of this boat that says the Wanderer, it looks slightly darker and marginally richer in the f2.8 lens versus the f4, but man, you are talking like, I, I could be making it up. I could be making this up, but you know, for all intents and purposes, these two lenses look identical. And going in at 70 mil with the f4 on the left, f2.8 on the right, both shot at f11, ISO 640 this time, because I wanted to make sure I didn't get any image shake. <sighs> Again, in terms of sharpness, they're identical, absolutely identical. Again, if I'm really, really picking at hairs here, I can, I can see that the f2.8 lens has a tiny bit more contrast, and that is reflected in the signage on the boat here, the signage on the boat up here. It could actually just be a slight difference in light during the time in which I switch the lenses. I don't know, um, but you know, <laughs> man, we are really like, they're, they're identical, let's just face it, they're identical. Now let's look at the 24 to 120 and we'll compare that with the 24 to 70 f4. And I have to say, because obviously I've already looked at all of the images and come to my conclusion, that I was pleasantly surprised by this lens, the 120, because uh, I'd, like I say, I'd, I'd kind of dismissed it. Now on the left here, we have the 24 to 120. We're gonna zoom all the way into the pub. On the right, we have the F4 lens, which we've established now is a fantastic lens, almost identical to the F2.8. And yes, I see very, very little difference here at 24 mil. This is a F11, 24 mil, ISO 640 in this particular image. There is more of a difference in contrast though. I think the 24 to 70 F4 seems to give a rich image, better tonality in the shadows and more contrast. And that is noticeable. Whereas these two lenses, it was barely noticeable. I had to really look for it, but it just seems more obvious when I look at the, the 24 to 120. So it seems to be lacking a little bit of contrast, but again, I'm really splitting hairs and that could very, very easily be corrected with just processing your image. Now here's where we start to see the failings of the 24 to 120. So at 24 mil, this lens surprised me. It's great. It looks very, very, very similar to these other two lenses here. But as we go further down the lens towards 70 mil, there is a noticeable difference. So on the left, we've got the 24 to 70 F4. On the right, we've got the 24 to 120. And we'll, these were shot at 70 mil and we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna look in the center of the lens here, the center of the image. And both images look great. They look identical, fantastic. But when we go up to the edge of the frame here, we can see a nice sharp sign on this pub. This is the F4, 24 to 70. When we go up to the same spot on this lens, you can see it's much softer. So the edges of this 24 to 120 are starting to fall apart as we, you know, as we go further down the focal range. Going back to the f2.8 versus the f4 24 to 70. I shot an image here at f5.6 50 mil, which is a, they, that's a great combination for a lot of photography. You get great isolation of your subject. And I photographed on this life boy. Now on the right, we have the 2.8 lens. On the left, we have the f4 lens. They are absolutely, well, no, not quite, but, 99.99% identical. Both of them very sharp, very nice color. The one difference I can just notice is the f2.8 lens has slightly softer, creamier bokeh. So I will be the first to admit that was not the most scientific test. There are many attributes when it comes to looking at the quality of lens. It's not just sharpness, things like weather sealing and contrast and chromatic aberration and vignetting, none of which I was really able to establish from a handful of images taken at my local beach, but it did give me the answer I needed to go forth into the next stage of deciding which of these lenses will be full-time in my kit. Now, in a couple of weeks, I'm going on a photography trip of a lifetime, something I've been trying to do for over four years now, and it's finally happening. And that will be the ultimate test. All this testing that I've done here was just so I could pick a lens for that trip, which then hopefully will solidify my decision. Uh, it's a very roundabout way of doing this, but you know, you, you've, got to, you've got to have a bit of fun. Anyway, here's my notes. 
These are my notes from all of the testing. 24 to 120, almost the same as the other two lenses, but appears to lack contrast, edges a little soft, but really only Tony Northrup would notice. <laughs> 24 to 70 f4. Same as f2.8, apart from f2.8. <laughs> so basically in all the testing I've done, it's identical to the f2.8 version, only it doesn't stop down to f2.8. f2.8, slightly better bokeh <laughs> at f5.6. And it has f2.8, of course. So you can all give yourselves a pat on the back for sitting through this tedious video. Uh, let me just not waste any time. The 24 to 70 f4 is going to be the lens of choice for my big photography trip. And if it performs well on that trip, and I'm happy with it in all circumstances, this is the lens I would buy. There is no question. It's less than half the price of this 24 to 70 f2.8. It's considerably lighter and even more considerably smaller. Look at the size difference. As a landscape photographer who travels a lot, walks a lot, does hiking, something like this is perfect. You're not even gonna know that it's in your bag. The 24 to 120 is an interesting one because this is a lens that I think a lot of people would benefit from owning, definitely. But I feel I don't need it because I think that after 50 mil, it starts to fall apart a little bit. Um, and I have the 100 to 400. So I can live without that 30 mil. I can live without 70 to 100. You know, there's never gonna be a situation where I think to myself, oh man, if only I had 85 mil, I don't think that will ever happen. So I'm very, very comfortable shooting 24 to 70, 100 to 400. So there you go, my consumer advice this is a fantastic lens.